yeah, 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 yeah. She said her mom's from Africa and her pops is Caribbean. It's feeling like Club 426 on Memorial Drive. We had to experience, yeah. I grew up on Notorious B.I.G. Now I finally know the feeling, yeah. I need one more chance, one more chance, cause you won in a million, yeah. Yeah, you something like a Leah. I'm gonna need a four page letter. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you are new here. If you are new, I would love for you to take a second and go down below and subscribe and click the little bell button so you'll never miss when I post a new video. So, as you guys can see, I'm kind of in a different type of setup situation today. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. Um, I kind of came up with this idea because the other day I was washing my hair and I was just talking to myself, like, just out loud and I was like a lot of this stuff that I'm saying is good information I should probably just turn on the camera one day and like film myself talking to myself I feel like when I'm washing my hair it's like my me day it's like my day to just get myself together my hair my skin my energy my like everything so I figured I would show you guys how I like to wash day and chill but also talking to you guys about a topic that has really been kind of on my mind heavy lately if you follow me on Instagram or Snapchat or Twitter, then you saw that I just got this huge PR package from Shea Moisture, like the biggest PR package I have ever received in my life. Obviously, I've been working with Shea Moisture for a little bit of time now, so they send me things, you know, here and there every now and then, but this package was like ridiculous. I just, I don't know, I felt very overwhelmed. I felt like, wow, like... Lately, a lot of brands have been noticing me. They've been reaching out to me, asking me to try their products, asking me to review, saying they love my content and saying they love, you know, the way that I put things together, how I show it to my audience and everything. And like I said, it's just been very overwhelming. And sometimes I find myself feeling undeserving or feeling like, you know, what did I do to even get to this point? And I know that there are a lot of people that follow me that aspire to be bloggers or YouTubers in the future and stuff. So I figured I would just make this video to kind of talk to you guys about my YouTube journey, about um, how I built my brand and how I'm still building my brand. And just like the raw truth about what it's like to be in the YouTube space, in the blogger space, and how it's starting to evolve as well. Gonna be eating some snacks. I got my water. I got my pineapples. Um, I got some applesauce. And this is literally what I do on days where I like do my face mask and my hair and stuff. I just chill. I work on top of my computer. I eat some snacks. I'm also kind of excited because I literally just got the PR package from them today. And um, these two products, the Daily Hydration Shampoo and the Daily Hydration Conditioner from the Coconut line, I have never tried. There are a lot of things from Shea Moisture that I've already tried, but these two I've never tried, so I figured I'd try them for the first time today. I've actually already shampooed my hair using the Daily Hydration Shampoo, and I really, really like it. I don't know why I was kind of doubting it before. I actually was going to purchase this myself, so I'm kind of glad that I didn't. <laughs> But I was doubting it before, but it really, it's a really good shampoo. I feel like it definitely cleansed my hair. All of Shea Moisture shampoos are always very hydrating and very moisturizing, so I was never worried about that. It's also very silky. It has a good lather. Um, it's a decent shampoo, so I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for something. If you have very dry hair, for sure, your hair will probably like this. But if you don't like coconut oil or if you are protein sensitive, you might not like this because it's very heavy in coconut oil and coconut milk. So, <laughs> and like I said, I'm going to use the um, virgin coconut oil conditioner from this line. And let's go ahead and get into the chit chat. Okay, so first things first, when it comes to starting your own YouTube channel or your own blog or your own website and just the whole process of building your whole brand in general is not easy. And you would definitely be fooling yourself if you're looking at other people like on social media and stuff and assuming that it's easy because it's not. Honestly, the journey is different for everyone, but I personally have put a lot of time and effort and money into my YouTube and social media. Um, and it's been a long road and it still is. So I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about my YouTube journey, how I started, why I started and all that stuff. So for those of you that have been following me for a long time, then you know I actually started on YouTube with two of my old friends from middle school. We started a channel called True Stage and that was in 2013 going into 2014 almost. This conditioner is nice. Ooh. We did videos on YouTube together for a while, but ended up just not working with like our own schedules because we were still in school, like in high school. 
and we just didn't have the time to always meet up and film videos and stuff so we decided to kind of make our own channels and go our separate ways when it came to social media and stuff but I'm actually the only one out of the three of us that still actively do YouTube. Honestly though, back then when we started that channel, none of us knew anything about makeup. None of us knew anything about anything really. And it was around the time that I had just went natural. So I was literally just learning about everything. So we didn't really have much to offer on YouTube. We were honestly just on there just because we were bored and wanted to do something. But in the midst of all that, um, being on YouTube back then and seeing like other people Especially when I was in my transitioning stage and, and trying to go natural. I watched a lot of the OGs like Natural 85, I watched Natural Chica, I watched Mahogany Curls, um, who else? Journey to Wasteland, The Quest for the Perfect Curl. If you are new to YouTube, you probably don't even know who half these people are, but they like started the YouTube natural hair wave, okay? And I used to watch them faithfully and those are the people that also kind of inspired me to be natural and to show my journey on social media. I've also always had a passion for film and editing, so being able to combine my love for natural hair and beauty with film, it just easily became a hobby for me. I started my channel, which was originally called Purely Casey. If you're an OG, you know that. Um, my original channel, which was Purely Casey, I started that in the summer of 2014. And guys, I spent hours, like, hours daily on the computer just researching um learning about every little possible thing that i could whenever I, I would get stuck i would just google it i literally didn't ask anyone for help y'all like i honestly can say that i learned 90 percent of what i know on my own just by observing other people on youtube by reading description boxes by just researching online and that goes for all the technical stuff and the hair knowledge stuff too it was honestly very hard to do while I was in school and while I was still in my parents' house because I couldn't really film on a schedule and um, I was still very deep into learning all the things that went into running your own channel and stuff. Even though I already had a profound passion for film and, and video and stuff, I still had to learn editing, I still had to learn all the camera settings, I still had to learn lighting and figuring out the best angles for filming. And honestly, a lot of that just comes with doing it and being consistent in practice and also like always being open to trying new things. But even though it was kind of hard, I still tried to post as frequently as I could, even though, like I said, I was still very deep into learning everything. So with that being said, you have to be passionate about it. You have to be passionate about every single aspect that comes into YouTube, especially if you're doing it all on your own. You have to think about about what you want the purpose of your content to be so do you want to be entertainment do you want to educate do you want to inspire do you want to be a combination of those you honestly have to establish a purpose that's deeper than the money or deeper than the free stuff that you may get which also does not happen overnight <laughs> because once you establish your person your person because once you establish your purpose um, that will radiate to everyone who watches you including brands and sponsored scouts now when it comes to brands and sponsorships Back when I started, none of that stuff was even a thing. Like, nobody was on YouTube making a ton of money. Nobody was making a living off of doing YouTube. Nobody was being brand ambassadors or brand influencers. Like, all that stuff is new and still evolving. So back then, it was easy for me to just do it because I genuinely loved to do it. I genuinely loved learning and teaching about hair and beauty. Like, and I loved filming. I loved editing. I don't know if I like this conditioner, y'all. I don't have a lot of slip. But yeah, now YouTube is literally like a marketing and advertising platform. Not saying that my motives have changed or anything because I still genuinely love learning about hair and beauty and and sharing my thoughts and like my tips on them but now it's like wow I can actually make a living doing what I love to do it's lit so that is kind of what attracted me to expanding into a blog for my YouTube channel because I just started to kind of want to branch out into other social media platforms and just continue to build um, my audience and my viewmanship so I started my very first blog um, in my first semester of my freshman year in college actually, I was in a club called AMA and they were teaching us basically about WordPress and um, about website design and stuff like that and I got really into it so I decided to make my own. So I was originally using WordPress as my platform and WordPress is cool but it's kind of hard to teach yourself how to do certain things and um, especially if you're new to like web design and stuff like that, WordPress doesn't really give you a lot of freedom or a lot of step-by-step -step guidance. And I pretty much hated working with WordPress. <laughs> so I switched to this platform called Wix in May of 2017, which was this year. And I did the entire blog myself. 
top to bottom 100% on my own. And once again, Google was my only help. <laughs> but thankfully, Wix is pretty self-explanatory to use. You just have to be patient because <laughs> it's a lot of tedious work that goes into putting it all together. A lot of people always ask me to do like a video on how I made the blog, but I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea. <laughs> Like, I, I honestly just kind of went with the flow with things when it came to my blog. Um, I, I really don't, I don't know how would be how I would be able to explain how to do it. Because I, I literally just, I just did it. And honestly, with the blog and the YouTube channel, it can be kind of draining when you feel like you're not getting the attention or you're not reaching the people that you want to reach. Like, there's so many people trying to do the same thing as you, trying to get the same sponsorships, trying to get the same you know, 100,000 views a video. And so that's why I also say like, you have to be passionate about whatever it is you're doing on your channel and really work hard to stand out doing it. And not just your channel, but your blog as well. It's always very good to be inspired by your favorite person that, you know, does it and be inspired by the way they do things, but don't steal their ideas, don't steal their exact layout. Because that's why I find it hard sometimes to share how I do certain things because I feel like I'm not that big yet and somebody could easily just take my ideas and that's kind of scary. So sometimes when I'm kind of hesitant to tell certain things or how I do certain things, it's not because I'm being selfish or because I don't want to help you. It's just that I don't want people doing, you know, their things the same way I do mine because I did mine 100% on my own. I worked hard for it myself. So I just finished putting in the conditioner and tangling my hair. I'm going to go rinse this out now. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you guys though, this doesn't have a lot of slip. Like, it definitely moisturizes, but I don't feel like I was really able to detangle my hair as easily as I would be able to with other conditioners. So yeah, I'm not too sure about this one. <laughs> but I'm gonna go rinse it out and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. And now I'm going to deep condition with my fave, the Shea Moisture Intensive Hydration Hair Mask. They actually just sent me another one of these in my big PR package as well. And I'm so glad because I had just ran out of mine. This is one of those products that I'll always buy. Like, no matter how many products I get for free, this is one product that I will always buy. Okay, so where was I when I was talking? Yeah, so definitely one of the biggest things um, when it comes to YouTube and blogging and everything is staying true to yourself, having a purpose, and just working hard on your own. Especially in the beginning, you don't want to get too many people involved in your craft and your project because at the end of the day, you don't want people taking credit for anything that they may have helped you do. You don't want anyone to feel like they can take anything from you. It's better to just get on your own, girl. Obviously, everybody needs help. Everybody needs help with certain things, but I'm just saying you need to do as much as you can possibly on your own and then ask for help. Bigger people will also be more willing to help you when you already have something to present them and show them that you've been working towards. Because if you just look like you're just begging for help and you just you know, you don't want to put in the work on your own, then no one's going to want to help you and no one's going to want to put any type of energy into you. Especially when it comes to bigger YouTubers or bigger bloggers and stuff because, I mean, they've worked hard on their own stuff. They don't have time to be putting all their energy into someone who's just trying to take from them, you know? Also, when it comes to, like, being new on YouTube and stuff, I find a lot of people always, like, in my comments and in other bigger YouTubers' comments, like, come sub for sub or come check out my channel or just pretty much using other people to advertise themselves and I don't think that that's respectful especially when you don't even mention anything about the video like you're just trying to get people to notice you and come to your channel obviously you want to promote yourself and obviously you want to get your name out there but but doing all that sub for sub and check out my channel stuff under other people's content is just not okay another thing too like I don't like when new youtubers try to come to me or to anybody looking for validation. At the end of the day, just because I might not personally like your content does not make it not good. You have to be confident in your content. You have to be happy with what you're doing. Obviously, it's okay to ask people for tips and to get their opinion on things, but you definitely don't want to beg for validation and you don't want to constantly be looking for other people to like approve your stuff that's the word approval you should never feel like you need approval for anything that you do in life especially not your own youtube content even though it may be beauty or hair related it's still an artistic type of thing i also used to think that you could just post videos and post things on social media and like you would get noticed but 
that's not the case. <laughs> now more than ever, it is very, 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 very important to make every single post count. Honestly, like when you really get into it, you'll realize that too much time and energy goes into the filming and editing process and the creation of the social media posts and all that stuff. It takes too much time and energy to just be posting nonsense. You really can't have acid because you won't get noticed and you'll be wasting your time. I kind of like to think of my Instagram and my YouTube and my blog as my resume. It's literally a representation of me as a brand and how I show and review products and how creative I am with my um, interesting content and like at the end of the day, Brands want to work with someone who is diligent about their content. They want someone who's going to make whatever they're trying to promote look good in a fun and organic way. And obviously they want somebody that's going to fit whatever the brand stands for. And honestly, it takes time to really learn all about the ins and outs of what social media marketing is starting to evolve into. But that's why it's just really important to focus on yourself and making yourself look good and making your content the best way that you can so that way opportunities can just kind of start coming to you trying to fit someone's brand or trying to make yourself you know look like you could fit something or forcing certain things is not okay brands would prefer to see that you're organic and that you're honest than for you to like be trying to force something you know okay so i finished putting on the deep conditioner i'm just putting on this pet and i'm gonna just put this towel around it too and this just helps to trap some heat and to make the deep conditioner work a little bit better. While this is working, I'm also going to put on a face mask. Lately, I've been loving multi-masking, which is basically like a technique when you do facial masks that you can target different um, concerns on your skin with different face masks. So I've been kind of switching up um, where I put certain masks on my face just to see which way they work best. And so far, these are the two masks that I've been loving to multi-mask with. This is the Matcha Mud Mask, the deep skin cleanser. It is anti-aging, anti-acne, um, it's a pore reducer, oil control, all of that all in one. I like to use this one on my T-zone. And then I also have the new Shea Moisture Dragon's Blood and Coffee Cherry Instant Rebound Mask. And this one's just supposed to like help wake up your skin, moisturize your skin, and plump your skin. So I like to use the matcha mask in my T-zone because that's where I get acne the most often. That's where I'm most oily. So this is a good detox mask for the T-zone. And then this one I put everywhere else to help with moisture because I do have some dry spots on my skin in some areas and also to just help plump and revive my skin. And I'm just going to use this um, foundation brush to apply these on my face. So um, I don't know where I was at, but basically you definitely have to be patient you have to be dedicated and definitely the biggest thing would be you have to be consistent. Some people get famous real quick and have this huge following but they fall off the face of the earth and people don't come back to their content. So it's very important to be consistent. And if you're in school, you really just have to do the best that you can to make YouTube work in your schedule. Now with me, um, I've started making YouTube more of a priority lately just because this is what I really see myself doing, you know, full time eventually. So I take mostly online classes to give me more flexibility and freedom. And I also just prefer online classes because they're easier to me. But making the time to post and making the time to make good content is very, very important. One of the biggest struggles that I've been having recently is managing myself because lately I've been getting so many opportunities for sponsorships and for product reviews and stuff and sometimes it really can get stressful trying to keep up with all of those emails and all those people. That's why now I understand more than ever why some YouTubers actually have a manager because it's really hard to do it on your own especially when you're in school and stuff. That's why it's so important to be diligent about your work and to stay organized, stay on top of everything. I have a calendar with everything, you know, with every day the stuff I want to do because essentially I make my own schedule so I kind of have to have like a daily plan like this is what i'm gonna do this day from this time to this time and i'm gonna make sure i get it done and then this day i'm gonna do this day and the third otherwise i would not get stuff done i would just be not doing anything <laughs> i feel like everyone kind of can create their own way of staying organized everybody's different when it comes to like what style organization you like i like having a calendar on my phone because i'm always on or near my phone so it's really easy for me to keep up with certain things when they're on my phone. I also find that um, setting reminders, having hella notes. Ooh, this mask feels really good on my skin. <laughs> but yeah, in order to be your own boss, you have to be diligent about your own schedule, like period. So pretty much all in all, when it comes to building your own brand and 
um, going on a limp of faith on your own when it comes to like trying to start a new business or anything. You have to be confident, you have to be diligent, and you just have to be willing to put in the work and the effort. There's no right or wrong way to do it. There's no manual. There's no specific journey that you will or will not go through. But at the end of the day, it's just up to you to take that leap of faith and make it happen. So I'm going to go finish chillaxing, letting my face do its thing, letting my hair do its thing. Hopefully I helped any of you guys out or maybe inspired you in any way to just go after it. I am definitely very proud of how far I have come and how much more progress I have to make in the future. And I hope that you guys will continue to grow with me because I wouldn't be where I am without you either. Thanks again for watching guys and I will see you all in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe to my vlog channel too if you haven't already. And if you guys want more like wash day and chills like this, just let me know in the comments below. And maybe I can do some more with some other topics. I will see you all in my next one.